हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर श्वेता कंसल्टेंट पेरीनेटल साइकैट्रिस्ट रेनबो हॉस्पिटल्स बंजारा हिल्स लेट अस नो समथिंग अबाउट बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर इज अ मेजर मेंटल हेल्थ इलनेस दैट अफेक्ट्स मूड इट इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय अनयूजुअल मूड शिफ्ट्स अनयूजुअल शिफ्ट्स इन द मूड दे विल बी एक्सट्रीम शिफ्ट्स इन द मूड समटाइम्स इट अफेक्ट्स द एनर्जी लेवल्स एंड आल्सो द एक्टिविटी लेवल्स so as we know that bipolar disorder the name itself suggests there are two poles one pole is mania that is the high end the other pole is depression that is the lower end so in the high end as i said there will be extreme shifts of the mood the person will feel there is high energy elated mood extreme euphoric mood happy mood along with that there will be extreme increased levels in energy activity levels the person feels like he can do he or she can do anything at a same time they'll take up multiple works at the same time there is decreased need for sleep they feel that 2 to 3 hours of sleep is more than enough they take up more number of tasks and they feel important and uh, as a celebrity they might feel as a celebrity they feel very important and they feel very talented okay so during this time they can take many risky decisions also so this being the high phase let us know about the low phase the low phase is called the depression you must be knowing about depressions where we feel sad unimportant we don't have energy we don't feel like doing anything not even getting up from the bed we feel lots of fatigue and low concentration sometimes hopeless helpless and worthless riddled with guilt ideations and also suicidal ideations so this time they feel decreased sleep they feel like sleeping but they will not get uh, enough sleep they don't feel refreshed in the day so there are many types of depression to talk about like one is melancholic depression so there are two very important symptoms which will demarcate melancholic depression from the other types of depressions that is diurnal variation of the mood where the person will feel extremely sad in the mornings and as the day progresses they'll feel better and the second thing is terminal insomnia that means the patient will sleep well to start with but they get up in the middle of the night maybe 2 or 3 am and then they will not be able to fall asleep so these two symptoms demarcate melancholic depression from other depressions the other type is psychotic depression to know about psychosis we should know about hallucinations and delusions hallucinations means hearing unusual voices which are untrue which are false nobody else can hear but the patient only can hear those voices and sometimes these voices are derogatory threatening and they can hear multiple people talking or one single person talking to them sometimes commanding also delusions where the patient will feel threatened someone is following me someone is looking at me everything in the world is happening in reference to me my life is in threat something might happen to me i might die or my family is under threat these are false beliefs but the patient will feel that it is true these are delusions so many other psychotic symptoms like thought broadcasting or thought insertion thought uh, withdrawal all these also can happen so when depressive symptoms are clubbed with psychotic symptoms it becomes psychotic depression and the third variety is postpartum depression which is most importantly we need to discuss right now bipolar disorder can present itself as postpartum psychosis or postpartum depression the risk is very high in the postpartum period i can say around 20% of postpartum women who do not have a previous history of psychiatric illness can develop the first episode of postpartum depression in the postpartum period postpartum period means from the time of delivery till one year post the delivery right along with that postpartum increases the risk by seven fold for the first episode in the postpartum period that is depression in the postpartum woman alongside what is the risk in women who already diagnosed with mdd or already diagnosed with bipolar disorder the risk increases by 50 to 70% that means 50 to 70% of women who are already diagnosed with bipolar disorder who conceive and give birth are at risk of postpartum depression 
and bipolar disorder in this period so what are the symptoms they might feel or along with the, all the depressive symptoms that i have already told you they might feel imminent risk to the child to the baby imminent risk to themselves they might not be able to care for the baby during the immediate postpartum period they feel uh, intense crying helplessness hopelessness and they might feel that there is a harm for the baby also sometimes even psychotic symptoms also appear during the postpartum period the risk is more in the first one month so what should you do the best thing is to go for a screening in the early pregnancy period i would say in the first month of pregnancy or first trimester of pregnancy please get a screening done what are the risk factors that we see in the screening which increases your risk for postpartum depression and postpartum bipolar disorder those are if you have symptoms of depression and anxiety during the pregnancy if you have a previous illness that is already diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder or any other major mental health disorder especially major depressive disorder previously prior to your pregnancy if you have stopped your medications that you are already using and if there is a family history of mood disorder especially anybody first degree second degree or third degree if there is a family history of mood disorder if there is concomitant substance use disorder if there are any suicidal ideations or any previous suicidal attempts we should definitely we can think that there is an increased risk of mood episode in the imminent postpartum period right so what to do suppose you are already on medications and what should you do then please do not stop medications immediately please go back to your psychiatrist or meet any perinatal psychiatrist to discuss about what are the next steps that are involved okay what are the various treatments available in bipolar disorder treating in especially in pregnant and postpartum period so we have the main first step is the pharmacotherapy that is with medications so there are several medications that are available which are considered safe during the pregnancy and postpartum period so we can use antipsychotics for mania and antidepressants during depression but first thing is you need to discuss it with your psychiatrist or any other perinatal psychiatrist regarding the risks and benefits regarding their use in the pregnancy and postpartum period so the studies say there is no increased risk of congenital anomalies but i would suggest there's a collaborative there's a need for the collaborative approach between the psychiatrist the obstetrician and also the radiologist if we have a collaborative care approach we can go for the desired outcomes that is happy mother and happy child so along with that there are other options such as neuromodulation techniques so the first option would i would recommend is tms deep tms or regular transcranial magnetic stimulation so this involves the use of magnetic waves to stimulate the target brain areas so it is fda approved treatment in depression uh, especially in major depressive disorder and anxiety disorders and even bipolar depressions so it is a very safe alternative and there is good response no side effects involved in with this particular treatment alongside the other neuromodulative technique that we use is electroconvulsive therapy we keep this for people who do not respond to regular antidepressants and who have refractory or very severe depression which is not responding to any other medication and there is an imminent risk of suicide this is where we recommend ect usually in the second trimester you need to discuss with the psychiatrist regarding the safety options and also the other alternatives for ect and the fourth option is psychotherapy we recommend psychotherapy alongside the medications and sometimes in mild depressions we can recommend cbt so these are the treatments that are available for bipolar disorder dear friends we need to understand that there are good treatments available for bipolar disorder even during pregnancy and postpartum prevention of episodes during the postpartum is a requirement right now and effective treatment strategies are available 
please do not delay your treatment. There are improved treatment options available and you can go for it. Right? Thank you.